why all this information? Um, because it's important that um, it's important for the public uh, health, safety, and welfare of, of the community. Um, this information is pertinent to um, some city departments. Uh, we share this information with the fire, police, health. Um, we utilize that for our department, the building department, as well as code enforcement. We're talking to Weena Guzman. She's with the uh, interim building commissioner for the city of EC. So, how does this work? You're the interim building commissioner. Yes. And Miguel Arredondo, you are the code in, uh, director of code enforcement. Mm -hmm. yes. wow. So you guys are in the same building, or in no? This, no, actually no. not. Once we compile the information, um, we provide uh, a listing of all um, registered um, registered yeah. properties to the code enforcement department, and in turn, they will um, cross check with. Um, cross-check with the county's uh, list of, of rental uh, properties and, and they will pursue enforcement uh, or uh, enforcement of those um, properties that have not registered. So um, if you fail to register, um, you are, it constitutes, constitutes a violation and uh, you're subject to a fine of up to $2,500 per unit. Talking to Weena Guzman and Miguel Aradano of the City of East Chicago along with Steve Segura of uh, the media services. Now, Miguel, <coughs> code enforcement is, do you enforce this then if they don't pay it or is that? Is yes, that? yes. That's Once Wina gets done and, the, and her building department gets done with that, as she stated, she will provide us with the list. And then we have the list, uh, and it's a two prompt. The list we have will be that she issued them a sticker already. We'll have them, we'll have our inspectors go out just to go check the properties and make sure that they are properly uh, are visible with the sticker and we know that they're registered then since uh, we know we've also been working together this year on going through the county for them to uh, and they have provided for with us uh, all the parcels for the city of East mm -hmm. Chicago and in it it's got the names of the, the registered owners we had to cross check them to make sure that if it's got an owner that has like for instance myself would have my name on three different properties well I'm not living at all three of them so I must be renting them Okay, and uh, we then have to go and check to make sure that those, as, as Wina said, if there's 1,700 buildings that we've identified, but she had a listing of 800, well, that's 900 that we have to now go find, get to the owner, and then have them come in, do the registration, and possibly still be charged and have to pay a fee, a fine. So, uh, I mean, that's just one of the things you do, obviously, yes. in, in uh, code enforcement. So, uh, you know, I guess coming back to the this registration fee, I know it's become somewhat of a political hot potato here in Hammond, and because it's new, and I think it's quite a bit more. But you guys have had this for a while, right? Yes, yeah, since two thousand and one. And then people just—that's how it is. Where they accept, they got to pay the registration, yes, pay the ten a, bucks. And I, I want to make it clear that this is on an annual basis. Um, you know, we get calls. Oh, I registered, but um, it was two years ago. You have to register on an annual basis. We are. We started uh, actually today um, registering um, rental properties, and uh, you can contact us, uh, the building department in East Chicago at 391-8294. Um, and it, it's it commenced today, and we receive it Monday through Friday between the hours of nine and three. And again, uh, registration forms are available online at www.eastchicago.com. Lena Guzman, what about Miguel Arredondo? code enforcement, the number one thing you guys deal with in that office? The number one thing that we've uh, started dealing with, and not only that we identified, but also at our town hall meetings, is the reciprocity problem. Reciprocity is something that I know you listen to all the time when the city of Hammond comes in. That is your out-of-state plates that are within your community, within your neighborhood. Uh, I would say that probably 50 to 60 percent of our calls are about that people saying that, uh, you know, there's an Illinois plate here, it's been here for two weeks, it's been here for six months, whatever their issue is, we then uh, take the information down, send one of our inspectors, and you're not automatically guilty because they're there that day. They, they then have to uh, tag the car and keep an eye on the car to see, yes, if indeed has been here, stays here all the time, or if it's just somebody who came to visit that day. Uh, we just can't take somebody's word that uh, it's been there a long time, we have to actually see that. We have two police officers who are actually assigned to us, and we assist the East Chicago Police Department with this issue. We started uh, toward the end of last year, in December, we will continue the beginning of uh, 
well within the next week when uh, the schools have started back. We started to go with to do this within the school facilities too. Um, people complaining about um, in our town hall meetings that when they go to school to drop off their child, that uh, they're seeing 15 and 20 and 30 Illinois cars bringing kids. Um, we're hopefully trying to work with the school city on that to identify not only the vehicles but possibly um, if the children are supposed to be within our schools or not. Talking to uh, Miguel Arredondo, we'll take a phone call, 219-845-1100. We'll let them get set up in our rather ragtag way of doing this, but it works, right? One works. way or another, it works. 219-845-1100. Hey, you're on the air, uh, Jen. What's happening? Uh, good morning. Thanks again for taking my call. Um, I had a question concerning rental properties. Can you uh, explain how is the determination made when you had what was at some point a single family home has now become a rental unit and you have two or more families living in that unit. Can you explain how that determination is made that, you know, a home can go from a one family to two or more people renting? How is that how is that decided? And um, is that a state regulation at all or does that vary by municipality? And I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thanks a lot. Who wants to take that when you have a lot of thing, a lot of homes that are now being rented? What, what well, happens? Well, um, what we do is go by what the um, we look at what the county has. Um, the county, if if the county has uh, has you down or that property in particular property as uh, as uh, say two units or more, then you're required to register. So we kind of uh, look up the county's records and we. Um, and if it reflects that, it, say it's two units, um, then you're required to register. Um, now, if, if they pull a permit and we go out there and check, um, or they uh, um, apply for a permit, say, and our inspectors go out there and check, um, if we s do see that they're uh, uh, cutting it into two, if it's a single family dwelling and they cut it into two or three uh, units, um, you know, they have to meet our zoning ordinance they have to meet our zoning requirements. So um, they have to go back to the drawing board and see if they, uh, if uh, that means meets the requirements, if, uh, and um, if they do not, they will not be allowed to, um, the, it would stay a single family dwelling. Uh, let me follow through with that too, Jim, <laughs> that this is one of the three issues that the mayor has uh, uh, directed the code enforcement to be observant of. Uh, the inspectors, as we go out to inspect any residence for any reason, whatever that call would be, the one thing that we have to do in inter, uh, uh, exterior and interior checks on these buildings, and the one thing that would make them conscious that they have to look for and to always is look for apartments that are either in the basements or apartments that are in the attics or possibly even within the structure in the first floor. And what we called illegal apartments because mm -hmm. they were cut wrong. They were yes. cut, you know, whenever it was. They so were cut without permits probably. Yes. And that's and the first uh, thing we do is we contact approval. We contact the WENA's office mm -hmm. and we say, can you look up this address and see all the permits that were pulled from it? Mm -hmm. And when you don't see them, I mean, we closed down a building, uh, one, of, one of the first acts when I first uh, came to code enforcement over on a street that had 16 um, I wouldn't even call them apartments, 16 uh, s sleeping rooms mm -hmm. in the basement, okay, and that's just a guy that was, uh, they had them all cut up uh, with nothing but plywood, and we went downstairs, and you couldn't walk through there, it was mm -hmm. basically, I don't even know if you could put a bed in all of them, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, you had 16 people staying in there, basically single men, uh, who were just, uh, um, had no other place to stay, or who uh, he was charging quite a bit of rent for. So, uh, those are the type of things that code enforcement has been, uh, really set up to do. And if they're illegal, they will not be registered. Yes. I was wondering yes. whatever happened with that, <laughs> that building. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, what we also made, which we made him do, and he did, was uh, we make him uh, dismantle the entire building. And vacate the building, yeah. too, as well. So how does this all uh, contribute to making EC a better city? A good example. The reason that we came to that residence was because the police had had over 125 calls at that place. Of, of disturbances, of shootings, of people hanging around, loitering, whatever the issue was. And because of that, it, it brought a message to us, well, 
what's going on in there. And then it gave us the ability to go and check on it. And when when we did that and took away, since that time, I've, t I've talked to the two officers that we had, and since that time, I think they've received three or four from, uh, calls in the last two years at that same place that they had 125, 150 calls at. You know what? One of the uh, we're things this, this is Steve Segura now. One of these things that were brought up at the town hall meetings was that um, the city of East Chicago, the mayor kept saying, is in a transient state where we have so many people coming in and out and not establishing a permanent home in East Chicago. Um, and one of the focuses he wants to do is is move back to the single family home dwellings. You know, um, or you take pride in your your neighborhood and, and knowing your neighbors and uh, I think you know once we start moving back into that um, frame of mind like this is my house this is my neighborhood this is my city then you know y y Chicago can start you know turning that corner and making it you know just a better place to live. Steve Segura, Weena Guzman and Miguel Aradona if you have any questions about this you better do it right now at 845-1100. Now, I want to come back to you, uh, Miguel. The, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, trying to use code enforcement to basically make the city a, a more hospitable place to live and so forth. Yes. What are some of the other, uh, outside of, you know, having cutting up the place and not having their uh, uh, registration, what are some of the other major uh, violations that you see? Uh, our main real, uh, job was from the beginning when they put us in together in the summertime was just the, just the beautification of the city by upkeep of lawns, upkeep of your garage, upkeep of your building, uh, making sure that the, the trees limbs aren't just hanging over everything, which, which is basically goes back to a concept in law enforcement they had, which is the broken window theory. and that broken window theory is that you take a city of uh, a neighborhood and it's a perfect perfect neighborhood and then there's one little broken window and the concept is that you change that window immediately because it's still a perfect city but if you let the window stay broken then the next child comes by and he throws a piece of paper on the floor and then when you do the next door neighbor doesn't cut his grass and on and on and pretty soon it's just out of hand so if you just keep it perfect and it's not that you can't keep it perfect but you do as much as you can to beautify it Make people responsible, and if Steve says, go back to having pride in your in your property, and basically that's what code enforcement is. We're there to help people help themselves. It's n it's about taking away that this, that the city owes you all these different uh, types of uh, uh, assistance as far as uh, us taking care of everything. It's for you to help yourself take care of your own property. What part of the city you find yourself going to most for code uh, violations? It used to be that you would think that the harbor side was, but I would say that we spend the majority of our time now in the Chicago South Side. Really? Yes. I would have guessed. And that's a lot harbor. to do with that's not it's a lot to do with what Steve says. It's the transition. The trans transient mm -hmm. type is much more in the South Side. You know that broken window theory works because one time they told me that, and I felt guilty, and I, I went and fixed the broken window <laughs> in my garage. <laughs> and that's, that's the concept. That is. What about that broken window on the back passenger window of your car there? <laughs> Driving oh, around with no. that cardboard for a while. <laughs> not and me, not me. Uh, <laughs> that's another theory altogether. That was maybe 15 years ago. I <laughs> Steve Segura, Winnie Guzman. Weena. And Weena. Weena, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep looking at the card, and I, and I can only see W-I-N-N, -N, and Miguel Arredondo. And what else we got? What um, else we got? I would like to just uh, uh, send a shout out to my family, uh, Francisco, and uh, my beautiful daughter, Jacinia. Uh, and how old is Jacinia? Um, she is 13. She's in eighth grade. And she goes to what? St. Stan's. She goes to St. Stan's yes. on the boulevard. Yes. So she's in seventh, sixth, fifth eighth. grade. Eighth grade. Oh, yes. Okay. And uh, so, did you go to St. Stan's? No, I did not. Where'd, where'd no. you go? I went to uh, Lincoln. I was a um, Lincoln and uh, Block, and oh. then to Washington. Lincoln Elementary uh, in East Chicago. Yeah. Yes, I've been a long life resident of East are Chicago. You, are you ECW <laughs> or ECR? The other one. Bishop <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went to I went to I went I went to uh, 17 years of Catholic He's school. He's a good boy. 